How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Mnix Plays Path of Exile. Uh, we are now in Act 5. Last episode, we picked up our first Ascendancy, so our first set of Ascendancy points. And we are rolling with the Occultist. Um, and the first set of points we got using the Occultist, uh, so basically, basically this is our subclass. Um, our Ascendancy points, we put it into Profane Bloom. Enemies explode um, or have a chance of exploding when you kill them. I'm starting to have second thoughts on whether I want to have this uh, passive in the first place. Um, in order to get it to work, you need to curse enemies. And I don't have a great way of cursing. So I originally we had um, Hex Touch. We had Hex Touch with our... Uh, our Frostbolt skill. Uh, but now I'm thinking maybe we drop another herald and i'm gonna use blasphemy with frostbite so what blasphemy does is in exchange for reserving 35 percent of your mana instead of self-casting your curses it now becomes uh an aoe aura around you so everything around you just naturally gets cursed with frostbite now the aura isn't very far i basically have to be sitting next to him as you can see uh we can try it out and see if maybe it's a little better we're gonna have to see so let's give this a try because the one problem i realized with doing hex touch uh frostbolt is that it requires them to get hit by frostbolt first um, so if they either get killed by Frostbolt, or if the Ice Nova hits them before Frostbolt hits them, they don't get cursed immediately. So instead, we're just going to play like a pseudo melee build right now. Um, and essentially, uh, uh, just get close to them. When we get close to them, they get cursed, and then we'll cast all of our skills that way. Oh my... And it seems to be working pretty well. Okay, we've got a good amount of currency here as well. We got a hollow flask. Some more flasks is always good. With our skill point, um, I think we can actually start looking towards power charges. So maybe spell damage per power charge. That seems pretty strong. And we seem to have three power charges all the time with our unique helmet. Uh, so that drop is actually a pretty good drop. And then you can see now, um, you know, our Ascendancy passive is triggering a lot more. Uh, mostly due to the fact that, you know, uh, we're able to more consistently curse people, right? Okay, now this feels pretty good. Okay. So again, um, the new league comes out in what, like eight days? And forgive me if, if I don't sound great, I, I, I've basically lost my voice from this cold. It just gets worse and worse. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the new league comes out in like seven or eight days. And we still have like, what, six acts to go? Um, so I, I, I would like to try and finish as much of that as possible. I'm thinking maybe we just have to speedrun it a little bit. Now, obviously, you know, if we see any new mechanics, we should still go over it. I think there was one mechanic that I didn't mention just now, which were the strong boxes. I'm just so used to seeing them all the time, like these, that I, I forgot to even mention it. But strong boxes, they're essentially glorified chests, except you could roll them. So, you know, it could be white, it could be blue, it could be rare, it could be unique. Um, and then they have typically one good modifier and one bad modifier. So the good modifier is additional sockets. The bad modifier is cast firestorm. And like I said, you know, you could roll these. So you could roll just like any other item. It could roll just the prefix, in which case it rolls the bad modifier. Um, or it could roll just the suffix or both anyways. Um, and that's a gist with, with strong boxes. There are many kinds of strong boxes. The generic strong box just drops all kinds of items, but um, I think earlier 
there was a strong box called an arcanist strong box which exclusively drops currency um you know there are a couple that are like good strong boxes and most of them are, are not worth spending currency on um arcanist the ones that drop currency are pretty good artisan the ones that drop quality uh currency are, are okay you don't need to spend a lot of currency on that uh, to roll it but uh, you could at least alk it i guess um and then uh the divination card one i think it's called the diviner strong box those are pretty good as well otherwise everything else there's a cartographer which is for late game maps you're not going to see that for a while so I, I won't go into it too much but you know art the one that drops currency the one that drops quality currency um the one that drops maps and the one that drops cards those are probably the best boxes um and uh, depending on how much you want to invest in it you know you can try uh i i would just like there are there are some general rules on how you spend currency but i don't want to get too deep into it try out the boxes you know only thing i need to mention is that some of the negative modifiers like firestorm uh ice nova they get pretty rippy later on and that's the only thing that you kind of need to be careful of uh which is not to open up a strong box and have the strong box blow up all the corpses nearby and then you just get one shot it from it um, or an ice nova you know the skill ice nova that we're playing the strong box has a mod where it'll cast ice nova and their ice nova does so much damage uh that that's another one that you would need to watch out for um so sometimes early on it doesn't really matter you can run it unidentified so if you just see a strong box and it's like blue or yellow normally you have to uh up use a wisdom scroll to identify the box to see what mods are on it early on in the game typically i don't even bother i just click the box and i run away um and then you know i fight whatever's what com whatever comes out of the strong box after after everything's defeated you get loot um but later on in the game those strong boxes get pretty strong and i tend to identify them and then you know if i see detonate dead or if i see ice nova i tend to play a little more carefully um but yeah that that's that's the gist of strong boxes it, it was a mechanic that really showed up uh, when did they release it it was like early stages of path of exile when they first started doing seasons strong boxes uh, came about and uh it's kind of stuck around in the base game ever since it's it's uh at this point unless you're like mega juicing right unless you're investing a lot into your farming strategies strong boxes are actually that's not true strong boxes are always like a viable option of giving you currency um i just never really think about it but yeah they're pretty good i think people for the most part it, it, nobody like truly loves strong boxes i think unless i could be wrong but no one hates it either it's not you know of all the content that we've gotten in path of exile over the years i don't think uh uh strong boxes were all that controversial you know okay so we're gonna get one to max power charge so that gives us 12 percent increased spell damage basically but then also a lot more crit chance and uh, the reason we get crit chance is because uh, power charges, or you might question like, what do charges do? If you go into your character tab and go to the charges tab, you can see, you know, there are three kinds of charges, endurance, frenzy, and power charge. Power charge gives us 50% increased critical strike modifier per charge. So we get 50, well, 200% increased uh, critical strike chance. And then we also get, 4% spell damage modifier per power charge. So we have 16% increased spell damage as well. So that's pretty good. And then, uh, you know, with our helmet, obviously we get 20% increased elemental damage and 20% chance to block spell damage. This is a pretty good helmet, actually. <laughs> I'm just looking at it right now. I'm like, hey man, this, this thing's pretty good. all right let's turn in all the quests that we've gotten we got one more flask i would opt for some kind of defensive flask so either armor or evasion it's one of these two jade or granite um i'm gonna say 
I'm gonna say armor? Ah, oh, but I'm running grace. I'm gonna say armor. I feel like armor is always pretty good. No matter what. And then I can roll it a couple times. Immunity to freeze, increase attack speed. Chance to avoid stun. I just want something decent. Evasion rating? Sure. Okay, and we'll roll with that. I thought I heard my baby crying. I like started panicking for a second. But she's good. She's good. Okay, so we're... Yeah, let's drop Hex Touch. I think Blasphemy is pretty good for us here. Um... And another book of skill that's pretty good and maybe we go into this power charge route yeah yeah okay let's go for that mana regen for power charge crit chance for power charge crit multi minimum power charge damage for power charge okay that's that's pretty good i think Now, one thing we didn't talk about is Delves, which was actually an Act 4 mechanic. Um, I need more mana. And uh, maybe it's something we can talk about later because it's like, it's a giant piece of content. You can go check it out. Um, probably at this point, if you're past Act 4, you ha already have checked it out. Uh, but long story short, Delve mechanic... Uh, it's like it's a completely separate mechanic is the thing right like in these zones you collect sulfite or like the the fuel to actually run the delve mechanic and in the actual mechanic itself uh you're like pushing this mine cart and going deeper and deeper into the mines that's like the gist of it right and uh we can we can actually go more in depth but Maybe I can show it, actually. Let's show it. Let's talk about the Delve mechanic real quick. That would just make okay, so Delve mechanic, when you're outside in the area, sometimes you'll see things called uh, Sulfite. And you use that Sulfite to power your cart. Now, I didn't find any Sulfite veins when I was sort of in the overworld, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but the idea is with that soul fight, you're able to take a cart and, for example, go from this point to this point, And it costs 24 soul fight. So when you do that, you have to like basically push this cart. You can actually run ahead of the cart and it will follow you. Um, and it'll go faster if you run ahead of it. And the goal is to stay within the light, ra uh, like the light range. Uh, sorry, not light range. The light radius of this cart. Um, it, you can go into the darkness and venture or delve deep deeper into it. But uh, if you do, you take like this darkness debuff where you take a lot of damage. Um, and it kind of grows. So you take more and more damage over time and you stay in the darkness. So you can kind of see the darkness. It's overwhelming. You are dying. Get to the light. So over time, you take more and more damage over time until eventually you die. Uh, in order to get rid of the darkness, you have to get back into the light. Uh, but there is advantage of going into darkness because you can find like all kinds of different loot, uh, like treasure chests, uh, these things called fossils, and overall, um, you know, those those things tend to be what you're delving for. Uh, you you get a good amount of like exp and currency in these zones actually. So. It is an option if you just want to try some other content aside from progressing through the story. You know, one downside of running Delve is that you, you want to be progressing through the story so you can get later into the game. But Delve is its own mechanic, so you're not touching any of that. Now, after you um, complete, you know, you, you Delve a couple areas, you pick up these things called Azerite, and you can use the Voltaxic Generator to actually upgrade um everything about delve so you can upgrade your sulfite capacity you can upgrade your darkness resistance the light radius of your cart uh you can get these things called flares and dynamites 
and what they do is essentially they allow you to blow up uh they're called fractured walls so there are areas in darkness that have these walls and uh you're, you'll see on your mini map there's like this blue icon and if you drop a dynamite on the wall you'll blow up the wall and behind it there's a bunch of treasure chests that allows you to you know get all kinds of cool loot and the major piece of loot that you typically get from delves are these things called fossils and resonators and fossils uh, a resonator it basically acts like a like a chaos orb so we have th things like essences right which basically acts like an alchemy orb uh and what i mean by that is it turns a normal item into a rare item now with an essence like this it also guarantees a mod so if i use this weeping essence of contempt on a one-handed weapon i also get a little bit of physical damage um it's guaranteed right now the way f fossils work is you have all kinds of fossils that you can pick up in the delves and instead of guaranteeing a mod, it get, it well, it gives you a higher chance to roll a certain subset of mods. So for example, this one is like more cold modifiers using the frigid fossil, right? And you have different kinds of resonators. So, you know, you can have a resonator that can hold one fossil or a resonator that can hold two fossils or a resonator that can hold three fossils. And the idea is you stack these fossils together. So for example, I could... Um, I could get two fossils like like this maybe right and I would put these fossils into this resonator um, and it's a one-time use right and this fossil gives me more cold modifiers and no fire modifiers this one gives me more caster fire a uh, caster modifiers and fewer attack modifiers so if I combine these fossils together into this one resonator I basically get a, a, a chaos roll so like it rolls a, a, a rare item uh, and turns it into a new rare item. That's what chaos orbs do, right? I have one right here. Reforges a rare item with new random modifiers. A chaotic resonator basically does the same thing, but the modifiers have a higher chance to roll cold them uh, cold modifiers, and also have a higher chance to roll caster modifiers. And also, they will not roll fire, and they'll roll fewer attack modifiers. So you can use these kinds of crafting techniques essentially to skew your um, odds of getting certain kinds of um, uh, crafting results, right? So that's sort of the mechanic of Delve. The one thing is though, with these fossils, if you don't know what you're doing, chances are you're not gonna know like do i need more physical modifiers do i need more caster modifiers what kinds of fossils do i need so like you, you don't need to worry too much about that piece um of content i guess the only thing to just keep in mind uh, in, in when it comes to delve is that it's a pretty good source of exp and a pretty good source of currency like you can get a good amount of currency just like tiki tack currency you know you're not gonna get entire stacks of like chaos orbs or whatever you're gonna get like one chaos orb and like one alchemy orb and like two fusing orbs like you just get a little bit of everything um but it, it, it does add up over time so it is one mechanic that you can try out uh it's it's pretty fun you know and you could always uh focus more towards these kinds of mechanics as you get into the late game like the campaign it really is just introducing you to the different league mechanics that were available in the past um delve being one of them right and you're not really gonna get into like too deep into it until you start investing into doing those specific kinds of mechanics so as you get later into the game there's actually another passive tree that essentially allows you to customize the experience um you have per mechanic so for example there are, um i don't know there are there are uh points on the passive tree uh that will make a strong box always rare right but then uh it will not be identifiable so you don't you won't know what this rare strong box will have but at the same time you don't have to identify these strong boxes so you can add like all kinds of modifiers to the way you farm and uh you know delve has stuff stuff for it as well um which basically means you can go explore delve and it's fun i enjoy it uh you can even do it during you know your campaign progression if you want to take a break but you're not gonna get too too deep into it because 
like the way you know a lot of people really make profit and really invest into doing delves is they go really really deep and as you go deeper you're going to take more damage these monsters are going to have more hp so you know your character needs to get better as well and in fact you probably want a character that specializes a little bit more into the delve mechanic um, and uh, unfortunately if you're a new player you probably don't know how to specialize into certain mechanics I, I, nobody expects you to know so don't feel bad if like people are talking about you know oh i'm like at i'm looking for a build that can go like level 1000 to the delve or like you're you're looking at build guides and they're like oh this build is specifically made to be a delver and you're like what the hell is that and you feel bad about not knowing don't don't feel bad about it like that's perfectly okay that's late game content right for now just you know you could try out the mechanic it, it's fun even without having to you know go super juiced despite what some people might say they're like oh there's no point in doing delve if you can't go to depth 700 or whatever um you know uh you don't listen to the haters it's a pretty fun mechanic it's actually one of my favorite mechanics um and i i never really make it that deep uh but i always find it pretty fun to run and and to me it's basically just like extra exp extra currency and then like a pretty decent way to wind down because uh delve is kind of non-stop action you know you get from one node to the other node and you keep running and you're just like fighting stuff all the time along the way which is it's it's really cool it's really fun um and it's also kind of hilarious to watch the npc uh like he's i guess as you collect more soul fight the stuff makes you go a little crazy so this guy just like as you get deeper and deeper into into the mines he just starts going insane and uh the voice lines they, they were acted out so well they were voiced so well um and uh you can just see this guy like slowly you know reaching the edge of insanity and uh yeah i thought that was pretty cool Okay, I found another four link simple robe with the links or the colors I want. Uh, and my current one is not very good. Okay. So I could try and roll it with life, I suppose, and hope that it hits some resistance. Oh yeah, that's, that's more than some resistance. That's more than... I lose evasion. I lo lose a quite a lot of evasion. Holy cow. How much does it go down by? Yeah, I lose like 300. Okay, well, it's it's not that bad. And then what happens to my resistance, though? My resistance gets fixed. It's probably worth it, I want to say. And I get more life from this. Yeah. Okay, let's give that a try. And, uh... Everything else is pretty garbage. Going into power charges and now we're fighting innocence so we're now in the sanctum of innocence this is where i think a lot of new players get killed this guy is like the noob killer I, I there was a there was a point where like it wasn't him it was like the act two boss like years years ago and then it was the act three boss and now and then like for a while it was the act five boss malak or act four boss malachi but this guy, like, he's he's underrated, man. This guy actually does quite a bit of damage. You do need to watch out for his mechanics. You do need to watch out for when he um, winds up and then does big slams because it'll do a lot of damage. I feel like Act 5 has a special place in my heart, actually. I'm just, like, looking at this. I'm getting major nostalgia. Uh, you know, way, way back when... You know, we didn't we didn't have when I was when I was your age, okay, ten years ago. You know, we didn't have ten acts. We had like three. Actually, it was two, and then it turned into three. For the longest time, it was three acts, and then they released the fourth act, and everyone was pogging out. This is this is what kills you, by the way. Like this, when he transforms to this, just make sure you have a good amount of fire resistance. And he does like all kinds of weird attacks. Some people think, oh, I'm strong enough. I'm just going to tank it. Uh, you're not going to be able to tank a lot of these. So just keep that in mind. As long as you have good damage, though, you shouldn't have any problems. Anyway, so yeah, like back then, 
you know you had to play the three the the it was archaic big gameplay i i will admit you had to play like the story three times so you had to do act one two three like three times actually there was a point where you had to do it four times but you know they got rid of that and then they released act four and i think you only had to do it two times you still had to do it three times but you do like act one to four and then there was a patch coming and basically everybody expected act five to come out and i remember watching the trailer at work and it was just <laughs> it blew my mind because the trailer basically went um you know how trailers go it's like cinematic music fighting and then like there's someone like th there's like this lady uh like talking and in, in like doing a monologue over the video right it's a it's a gameplay trailer we encountered the depths we fought the monsters and now now we've come to take our treasure protect our home you know like it's it's like he got a whole monologue going and as this is happening you know the trailers introducing act five and i remember everyone expected act five to show up um and then the video went act five and you see this you know the location of whatever this is right like you're fighting innocence or whatever and then it goes act six and then I, I was at work watching this video and i'm like act six what the hell and it went act seven what act eight holy crap act nine and they did that all the way to act 10. i remember just going home pogging out of my mind because uh, basically they they just released five new acts in a patch where everybody expected this this was these were the glory days man and it, at a time when like everyone just thought it's like okay it's time for ggg to release the fifth act you know maybe we won't have to do the story three times anymore maybe we can just do it twice and then the, the trailer was one campaign 10 acts i think i shed a tear i i kid you not i was i was <laughs> it was insane i'm getting like major nostalgia thinking about it those like i, I don't want to call it the good old days i almost did I don't want to call it the good old days because the game has has changed a lot from from back then and uh i don't think it's changed for the worse i think the game is is very fun you know there's there's more builds than ever these days and uh uh you know people who, who do say that it used to be better are probably looking at it with with rose tinted lenses or rose tinted glasses but you know like certain certain things might have been better like you weren't overwhelmed this with choice which is a problem that ggg has right now which is like they have so much content that you actually don't know which direction to go anymore and even back then there was a lot of choice right like this game gives you a lot of choice or maybe sometimes maybe the illusion of choice as some people like to say but there's a lot of directions to go and now there's like a lot of directions to go sorry need to hydrate real quick um but yeah so <laughs> I, I just remember like like at this point act five is it really is like i i i remember act five very fondly is is what i have to say and uh it's it's purely because of that trailer man that trailer was insane and then, you know, GGG continued to, to impress, really, if I think about it. Like, they, they released 10 acts, and then it was like a year or two later, they announced Path of Exile 2. And, you know, everybody was so hyped up. Unfortunately, I, I, I don't want to blame GGG. I think COVID screwed everyone up, right? And then they realized that, you know, Diablo 4 wasn't coming for a while, so they had more time, I guess? I'm assuming they needed to make Path of Exile 2 as a competition to to Diablo Diablo 4, I'm guessing, or maybe Path of Exile 2 was just a natural progression. Because they they could have just like released a new league every four months and, and just done that. Until the game died, basically. And it would have lasted for a long time, I'm sure. You know, you just keep releasing new content every four months. Plenty of people will stick around. But the idea of doing Path of Exile 2 was just, oh. They announced Path of Exile 2 again. Nobody thought 
nobody had any idea what was coming. They thought, you know, I, I don't even know what people were thinking. But at the time when it was announced, it was like, oh my god, this this is GGG can do no wrong. That that was sort of like the, the the thought I had in my head, right at the time. It's like I don't care what they do; they can do no wrong. Obviously, that's not <laughs> that's not completely true. You know, they can still screw up. You know, they're not they're not almighty, right? They make mistakes, but um, it, it it really felt like that at the time. It was just uh, I was fanboying hard. And now, you know, the expectations are a little bit more realistic, right? Like Path of Exile 2, what is it going to be? Well, I'm, I'm not too sure. I am excited to play it. Okay, I'm still, you know, that's the whole reason why I hopped back on Path of Exile. I saw ExileCon and I'm like, we got to play. This next league, like, I don't know. I'm just, I, I'm so excited. I'm going to enjoy it, I think, no matter what. You know, one out of expectation or out of... uh out of hype i suppose two out of just like i'm like earnestly looking forward to path of exile 2 and this is sort of leading up to it and uh i'm just yeah i just i got i got a little, a little nostalgic there a little sentimental thinking of how you know how, how far path of exile has come you know, it's not like PoE is. It's not my baby. You know, it's 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 grinding gear games. That company. It's Chris Wilson and all the the, the founding members of, of the company. It's, it's their baby, right? I'm like, I'm like the creepy neighbor that shows up like every couple months and then sees the kid and then goes like, "Hey, you've grown up. You you look a lot different." Right, and then you know this is the baby, right? Path of Exile is the baby, and I see it, and I go, "Hey, you've grown! Oh, wow! I remember when you were this tall." And then I would like point to somewhere near my knees, right? And and now you know, Path of Exile is like the equivalent of like an angsty teenager, <laughs> isn't it? It's like it's at it's at that phase where it's like it doesn't know what it wants to be anymore. <laughs> And everyone's trying to pull it in different directions, you know. So like, you know, I, I, I can't say that like, you know, this is my baby. I'm proud of how far it's come. But like, in a way, like I, I'm so proud to be part of the Path of Exile community, or at least to have like been there for the entire journey, right? Like, I, I do feel a sense of. I, I can't call it pride, right? But just like maybe gratitude for the fact that like, you know, after 10 years, you know, there's been screw ups, but, but path, you know, thank, thank you for raising a wonderful child. You know what I mean? Like, that's the feeling I have. It's like after 10 years, thank you for not being a dead game. And not being like a terrible game, <laughs> right? Like they added, if they started like adding like all kinds of like, I don't know, terrible like monetization models into the game that just doesn't make any sense for the longevity. I, at least they didn't do that, right? Uh, and overall, I would say the game is fun, if not more fun than it was. When I first started, the game's fun, and that's all—that's really all that matters, right? I, to be honest, I could say the same with Diablo. The game is fun, but there's like an asterisk, right? Like, if anyone were to ask me what my experience of Diablo Four was, I'm like, um, I had a good time. I put in like probably 100 to 200 hours. Okay, you don't put 100 and 200 hours into a game if you had a bad time. And that's the truth. Like for all of you guys, and I, like me, myself included, right? Like all of us who talk shit about Diablo 4, 
how much time did you put into that game? Have you actually put a considerable amount of time? And I understand it's like, well, I put in the time hoping to get something better, right? Like, you know, there there is something to be said about just trying to, um, what's the word? Trying to do my time, right? Like you get through the boring part in order to get to the fun part, but then you never felt got, <laughs> you're like, the whole time you were playing, you're like, where's, where's the fun part? Um, there, there is something to be said about that, right? It's like, I want to get my money's worth too. I spent basically a hundred dollars. It, you know, I'm, I'm going to try everything the game has to offer me. And otherwise it's a bit of a waste. Like I understand that, but, but for me, it wasn't like that. I, I actually did have fun, um, through the campaign and even probably up until level 70, 80 in Diablo four before it was like, uh, I can't go any further. Right, so everyone who's who's there, there are a lot of people who are saying, you know, Hello. you can't compare Poe to Diablo Four because Poe has a lot more content. Like I can, I can partially agree with that sentiment, right? Like there will be more content coming out. Um, Remember. but I could not play season one. I guess, I guess I will, I will say that I could not play season one. Um, I, I couldn't get ten minutes through. I, I got to level nineteen and i couldn't i couldn't get any further like i was literally fall maybe i was tired you know i have a baby maybe i was tired but i i was actually falling asleep um I, and i don't know why i think i think it was a little repetitive i think you actually do need to rerun the story like the actual story in in, in like because because what happened is i i was like well i've done the story once let me just skip the story so i skipped it right like in path of exile people complain about that too let us skip the campaign let me just like do something else for like 80 levels instead of the campaign i'm tired of running a campaign over and over and over and over and then i i sort of had that sentiment but not really but in d4 i'm like yeah let's skip the campaign it makes sense and I couldn't do it, man. I really couldn't. Um, like I said, I got to level 19 before I just, I tapped out. So I, I think Diablo 4. And, and that's the same reason why I like tapped out at around level 80, the, the preseason. Um, it just got a little too repetitive. And I was hoping they would have some more stuff for season 1. But again, I, it probably just needs more stuff. Um, and I mean, that's, you know, not to say it won't have stuff, but that's just a knock on current state, right? It's probably the, the Diablo. And I'm like, I'm starting to rag on it again. And I, I, I apologize, but I do need to get it off my chest. Like it, it just doesn't feel like a game that that's supposed to be played every season it's probably like a game you play like once every three seasons or something like something is oddly I, i've i've never fallen asleep like literally fallen asleep at a game and i know like some people think <laughs> like i'm not i, I was so good i was in a party with a friend we were playing together we were in a voice chat and I fell asleep during the Lilith fight. I didn't I didn't see her die. I don't know what happened. I was holding down the left click button and then just pressing like W Q I don't even know what I was pressing. I was, I was pressing buttons with my eyes closed and I fell asleep. I couldn't believe it. And it was at that point that I was like, why am I playing a video game when really all I want to do is go to sleep? And I went to bed. It was like the middle of the day. <laughs> I went to bed in the middle of the day. I lied in bed. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to fall asleep. I'm not that tired, actually. What the hell is going on with that game? Like, uh, there's something wrong with either the repetitiveness. I don't know if it's that. Some people say it's the camera angle. I, I ended up Googling it. I'm like, I can't be the only person that's literally falling asleep in this game. And people are saying, like, the, the camera is too zoomed in. So it, it looks like you're looking at, like, a like a still image still image almost right because not only is the camera so zoomed in 
um, it, it, so some of the bosses and the rare monsters take a few hits to get killed if you don't have good gear. So like you're just sitting there holding, you know, doing your skill rotations. I, I don't want to say holding the same button, but you're, you're going through a skill rotation and then just trying to like whittle down this, this tanky monster. And like during that time, you don't actually need to, you know, do anything. You don't need to manage flasks. There are no flasks, right? There's potions, I guess. Um, and what was happening was I would close my eyes. You know, five seconds later, I would open them. And then my life would be at like 10%. I'm like, oh, crap. And then I would like heal back up to full. And I'd close my eyes again. And that's that's literally what I did. It, it, even in preseason, like in during Nightmare Dungeons and stuff. I would fall asleep all the time. And then during season one... It was like the same thing, except I was falling asleep much earlier because I'm not doing the campaign anymore. I'm not running around. I'm just farming dungeons. Um, and like, I, I couldn't complete a dungeon. I, I couldn't do it. I don't know. I couldn't complete a single dungeon. Like, I would die at every boss because I, I wasn't using my potion. I wasn't using all my skills. I was falling asleep. Uh, it almost seems like a medical problem, man. Like... You know, I, I do have mild sleep app. You know, I thought maybe that was it. But I, I didn't have that experience with any other game, you know? Okay, dude, shut up, shut up. So something something's going on with, with the... Uh, like, I just, I just need validation. I can't be the only one, right? I can't. Is it me? It could be me, I suppose. It, it definitely could be. Okay, so... Is there a mastery that I want here? Yeah, 3% increased damage per power charge. Okay. Just minor damage increases, but I feel like it'll add up over time. I could be wrong. Maybe you cannot invest in power charges so early. I never, I never really tried. Okay, but we, <laughs> all of a sudden, we've, we've gone pretty far. Um, I'm actually at the end of Act 5, I think. How far are we? 40 minutes in? Okay. Okay, good, good. So we're, we're, we are kind of speeding it up a little bit. When I'm ready and not before. Is that my wife? That is not my wife. The, that's my friend asking if I want to play Dota. But today is not the day. We are playing Path of Exile. So yeah, so you know, thank you for 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 coming to my TED talk. I pretty much ranted for twenty minutes about Diablo Four. I, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I feel like at this point, it's like people must be tired of hearing about it. <laughs> I just have to assume, you know. But I I had to I had to get it off my chest, man. I really thought something was wrong with me. And uh, there, there could still be something wrong with me, okay? It doesn't seem normal for you to just fall asleep at a computer screen. Like, I, I, sometimes it would happen to me while I play on my Steam Deck. And I'm not talking D4 now, I'm just talking any game. Path of Exile too, even. Um, I'm, I'm playing in bed, it's dark. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm comfy. And uh, I would pretty much play for like half an hour and... I, I don't fall asleep playing, but I do get pretty tired, at which point I'm like, okay, I think I'm done here. Um, what does put me to sleep actually is YouTube, right? I don't know if anyone else does this. I know some people do this, or used to do this with my videos, actually, and I, I, I take no offense to it, actually. In fact, I feel honored, since it's, it's what I tend to do as well, is I, I put on a YouTube video... You know, I, I, it's like a one hour long video. Uh, my, my, 
my video of choice is something from Northern Lion. Okay. I, I put on a video and I would watch like the first five minutes and it don't get through 10 minutes because I would just fall asleep at some point. And then the next day I would put the same video on again. Right. Try to get through it. But again, I only make it through 10 minutes. And then we do just repeat, 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 rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And then I, it's like a month down the line and I I just go forget it. And I sit down and actually watch this video. And, you know, I very, pretty much consume one uh, one video at a time. But I'm, I'm single handedly, you know, contributing like 100 hours worth of watch time. Okay, so this is Katava, the Act 5 boss. He's a bit of a doozy. Um, you need to have a good amount of damage, and if you don't have a good amount of damage, you need to dodge his skills, because he does a lot of damage. So, like this thing, don't step in that, that's damage over time. This thing, it like, it, it basically converges and explodes. You know, he does slams all the time. He'll drag his arm across the floor, and you just kind of... You need to avoid that as well. You don't want to take that damage. Um, and then whenever you get a chance, just try and deal as much DPS as you can. We're, we're fortunate because I actually think I have a crazy amount of damage right now. Um, well, maybe not crazy, but like it's, it's pretty good. Especially since he's a stationary tar target, so I can just drop the frost bombs. Or the frost bolt. Okay. Oh, Let's see. He's he's he hurts, man. He hurts. I I did not expect that. I got a little greedy. I stood still for too long, and uh, I got punished basically. Ow. I think we got him though. That was unfortunately that was an unfortunate death. I was hoping we could go deathless. I mean we already died once, but <clears throat> Okay. We got him though. We got him. But it cannot be extinguished. Cool, and now we are in Act... Well, we're almost in Act 6. One thing you might notice after you killed Katava, so if you go into your defense tab, I used to have like 100% resistance or something. Now I'm at 60, 75, 51. Yours, if you did not actually invest fully into resistance gear, it's probably saying something like 30, 15, like, like negative 10 or something like that if you didn't bother going resistances. And the reason for that is if you look in your chat, okay, I don't know why they don't make this more obvious, but uh, when you kill Katava, he permanently reduces your resistances by 30% for the rest of this game. Okay, from here on out, your resistances are down by 30%. Um, so this is typically where players start to struggle or new players at least because they're like i i i walked out onto the beach and i got one shot it i couldn't kill white mobs i couldn't kill blue mobs somebody help me what's going on i don't know what to do and the reason was you got it you should have gotten more resistances right focus on resistances on your gear focus on life on your gear and you'll be fine and even then you know you got to keep moving because these guys hurt but you know at least you're gonna have a chance right Okay, so we're in Act 6. I got 10 minutes. I can do one more quest. So let's go back out to Twilight Strand. This is where we actually landed, right? This is where the, the beach that we landed on in Act 1. So in Act 6, we actually come back here after defeating Kitava because everything's messed up over here. So now you're basically retracing your steps and redoing all of this. Uh, so like, our, you know, they said one campaign... 10 acts it's like only half half true 
because they're actually what they're doing is taking the first five acts and recycling some of those textures and then rewriting the story to fit that right like the first five acts you killed the beast the beast was keeping all the gods under control and because you killed the beast katava you know the god of what the hunger or something you know he he ended up corrupting all the other gods and became becoming the major god or whatever so you know even though you weakened him uh he like fucked you up basically and now you have to go find a way to basically fix the beast right and then uh kill katava so you know now you're going through act one and then you gotta defeat all of the different gods that katava has corrupted um you know you're not redoing those act one bosses you're not fighting Merville again you're actually fighting brutus again though um but uh long story short you know are you in act six yes you're in art act six but it's also just like a remastered act one um it doesn't always feel like it though so that's that's kind of good the you know the quests are different the enemies are mostly the same And then like they, they change the texture. So like if this area used to be dark, now it's bright. And like they did add a couple more areas as well. Like it's not a complete reskin. Okay, so that quest basically in Twilight Strand, you just had to kill everything there. Um, and it kind of indicates, right? There's once you get to five or less monsters remaining, it'll say five monsters remain. Four, three, two, one, and then quest complete. Once you complete the quest, you can talk to Lily. Now she gives you two respect points and you're like hey what's going on normally you don't do respect point quests you only do skill point quests that is true but lily gives us something very special after you complete the quest you can purchase items from her and she has every single skill gem in the game minus a couple but most of the skill gems are now available so this is actually really cool uh, if you need more skill gems, uh, if you want to try other skills, if you want to take a look at what gems are out there, support gems, uh, skill gems, aura gems, whatever, this is where you can check it out. All right. So if you never did, if you didn't bother doing the library quest in Act Three, that could be an option as well. Um, you, after, you know, this Lily quest basically gives you access to the gems. Um. 52 minutes. Let me hydrate a little more. Let's keep going. Let's keep going until I hit the hour mark at least. So you're going to start to notice that things are going to hurt a lot more once you get to this point. Um, you're, you know, the enemies are going to use a lot more elemental damage from here on out. Like in Act 6, I find that they tend to use a lot of fire damage. Um, and, and this is, you know, where your defenses are really going to start to get tested. You know, if they haven't already been, um, you know, from, from Act 4 and onwards. Okay. Doing pretty good. We're actually going really fast. I don't know if you can tell. At least according to my standards, this is pretty fast. Mm, yeah, okay, we can go to mud flats. Oh, oh, like I said, you can tell these guys are doing fire damage and not only are they doing fire damage that uh, that fire beam actually lowers your resistance even more. So if you sit in it for long enough, you know, your your fire resistance just gets completely shot. OK. 
Okay. We're gonna get some spell suppression, I think. So more defenses. Two stone ring could be good. Okay. Ow. Yep. Not enough resistance. And I guess not enough life. I, I don't think I've been picking up any life notes. I haven't done it in a while. But that's part of the issue too. Ow, this guy hurts. What the heck? Is this Soul Eater or something? No. Ow! I, I don't want to mess with this guy. I can't kill him. He's too strong. <laughs> and I got the sneezes. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, what's wrong with this guy? Ooh. No, he's too strong for me. Don't have the defenses there. And I guess I didn't have the offense either, like I didn't have the damage. Okay, well we're we're on to the next zone. Tukohama, so this is one of the minor gods. Gotta kite him. Oh, there we go. Too much clutter. What was the ring I picked up? It could be good. It is not the greatest. 1831. 41 all resistance. This one gives 32 plus 9 also 41 but does it even it out a little bit mm. no i feel like it makes it worse and this stuff definitely doesn't make it better because this is like almost 60 57 to all resistances 
for the total resistance. Okay, so Maybe after uh, defeating Tukuhama, Sin captures his soul, and then it opens up the Pantheon mechanic. And basically, these are defensive mechanics. You get one minor god, which is the small circle, and one major god, which is the big circle. Right now, we've only fought Tukuhama, so this is the only uh, god that we've captured, and he's the minor god. So while we're standing still, we get 3% additional physical damage reduction up to a maximum of 9%. Actually, that's pretty good. Especially since a lot of my build is just standing still. Okay, cool. Now the Pantheon, you can only change it while you're either talking to Sin like that, or if you are in town. So just keep that in mind. And don't be like, hey, I can't, I can't change my Pantheon. I think my game is bugged. It's not bugged. Just gotta go back to town. And you're gonna be all good all right i got the next waypoint it is currently perfect it's the one hour mark gonna cut it off right here so this hour we ended up doing basically act five plus a little bit of act six um they went by pretty fast you know we, we did try to rush it a little bit but overall it was quite successful and uh oh i got one of these too yeah, that's the end of this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more updates in the future. Otherwise, keep in touch, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.